Hi, and welcome to part one of my three-part series on FIDO U2F authentication and the Citrix Netscaler gateway. In the first part, this video, I'll discuss some theory around what U2F is and give you some background as to why we might want to use it. Uh, in the second part, I'll discuss some architecture, how I integrated U2F and other components into my lab and how you can too. And then in the third part, I'll actually do a hands-on live demonstration of the implementation, all of the bits and pieces along the way. So let's start at the beginning with the FIDO Alliance. Uh, the FIDO Alliance is a nonprofit group formed in 2012, and their goal is to really create an open, scalable, interoperable set of standards and specifications that will really reduce the need for users to depend on a simple or uh, a password-based authentication mechanism. Next, of course, would be evangelizing uh, this specification and uh, having it adopted into broader, uh, more accepted standards organizations. Check them out, FidoAlliance.org. They've got uh, an about page which discusses you know, their, their mission statement, and then the specifications are all listed as well. And really onto that, uh, one of the specifications that was created was the U2F spec. And what U2F really is, is a definition around creating a, a pluggable, trusted method for, uh, to validate a user presence that still operates on this open and standard architecture to really allow everyone to adopt a simple uh, universal two-factor, which in turn gets to the point of less complex passwords, because we all know uh, part of the reason for password complexity is just that they're eventually easy to guess, or with enough effort you can guess them. But with a, a user presence type second factor, we ensure that not only is the password what the user uh, it wants, but also that we can confirm that they're there, they're, they're trying to do the authentication. I think a very interesting part about the U2F spec is how uh, the implementation is built in such a way that we can uh, challenge the user and expect a response using a token or some pluggable device. Again, this trusted pluggable method that I spoke about before. So at any time, we can kind of ad hoc say, hey, tell me, you know, confirm that you are you, and I expect you to be able to return a response. And what I'll show you today is really just a standard authentication using that challenge response mechanism. An important piece of this keying technology, this token technology, is that uh, while it's unique to you, when you register your key with a service, it actually creates a unique identity that's specific to that service and your key. And in doing so, this prevents services from commingling and potentially sharing information about you as, a, as an identity or as a person, while still providing you with the universal ability. The customer, the user, has the ability to use one key across many services, and that's really why uh, this is a universal two-factor specification. So being that the spec is brand new, it's not like there's a ton of implementation, but I wanted to get a jump on it and see what I could do. And, and in doing some other research, I came across the, the security key from YubiKey. It's the, one of the first U2F compliant devices. And of course, uh, this spec, if once you read it, which I, I encourage you to do so, really requires uh, you know, several components to be compliant. So this is the first actual, this is the pluggable token I was talking about before. It's trusted, it's, uh, you know, it's unique to you, it can answer a challenge response. So it does all the stuff that the device needs to do. And then I have some other components where we integrate later. Now, of course, uh, being a Citrix SE, I thought, this is cool. How can I use this uh, with Citrix technology? And being that it is an authentication mechanism, no better place to start than the gateway. And so what I'll show today in the demo is how I can use this uh, with very little effort uh, to authenticate to my own lab and do strong two-factor with a, a very simple password. So there's a few pieces that are required, of course, uh, for today. I'll have a Netscaler gateway. I'll have this... Uh, spec compliant token. I'll also have Chrome in the mix, which is a requirement. Chrome is the only browser that has implemented 
the U2F spec. Uh, Google is very much uh, involved in this spec creation, so it only makes sense that they would actually adopt it early. So C Chrome browser is required right now, and so I'll, I'll, this token will work with that. I'll also have uh, a radius proxy. So the Netscaler today uh, it doesn't implement U2F. Uh, like I said, there's only a few that have, but Netscaler does allow for radius communication for us as a security mechanism, and I'll leverage a cool company doing software as a service called Duo Security that ha has implemented and embraced U2F, so we can actually pass off via Netscaler Gateway to Radius and, and do an authentication against the proxy. So next, you'll see I'll take my YubiKey and my Chrome browser and Netscaler Gateway and get authenticated to my lab uh, securely using two-factor. Here we go. All right, I'll crack open my Chrome browser. It's the only supported browser with U2F right now. And I'll type in the host name of my uh, Netscaler gateway. You can see here I've got a kind of a typical, looks like a one-factor authentication. And it sort of is, so I'll, I've got Alice pre-populated with a username and password. It's a Windows authentication. I'll click Login, and that'll pass that Windows authentication through the Netscaler via Radius to an authentication proxy uh, and so the LDAP binding was successful here, and so I'm presented via an iframe uh, a duo security second factor authentication. So this is actually a web service, and it's embedded within that iframe. And because I've got U2F tokens, we have to talk through the browser to the token, and this will facilitate that. Uh, I can click Manage Devices, and what you'll see is that this token will start to light up. I can press the button, and it'll put me into the management screen. So this is actually kind of unique to Duo Security because I can manage tokens for that service within this, this iframe. So kind of powerful on the Duo, Duo Security, but also the Netscaler for being able to present that. I'm going to go back and just do a regular login. I'll click there, and this will actually do that token authentication again. You see there, and it's prompting that token. I'll press the button. And that will actually log me in to uh, the Nutscaler gateway, pass me through to storefront, and now I can launch my desktops. So as you can see, uh, really simple, really straightforward, uh, and of course very powerful because it's, uh, it's very easy to implement. And I'll show you that in the next couple of sections. I did want to close today, you know, being an, an emerging technology, uh, I do want to cover some of the pros and cons of the current state and, uh, and at least get, let you know what you're getting into. From the pro point of view, uh, these things are rock solid. Uh, at least in the near term, this token I think will be my preference. Uh, I can put it on my keychain, it could go in the washing machine, it could get stepped on, ro rolled over with a car tire. There's no battery, there's really no electronics that are popping up that can get smashed. So it's extremely rugged, which also makes it extremely effective. So uh, I can put it on my keychain and I can, when prompted for a credential pr or prompted for a challenge, I can give the response real quick, real easily with a low risk of, you know, snapping things off and whatnot. It also, uh, from a, a pro point of view, it does empower users because, um, you know, like the Citrix message of uh, work anywhere, uh, you know, bring your own device. I think security also needs to be broad. We need to be able to empower our users to bring their own encryption or bring their own device for, for password authentication. And that will really, really bring down the onus of the uh, enterprise to supply tokens to everyone and continue that uh, regimen when in fact we could go to more of a, a simple method. And along those same lines, uh, from a business point of view, it's very easily managed. In fact, it's no differently managed than, let's say, RSA or Semantic is today because it's still in a management console where you have tokens registered to users and those users have various rights. So that doesn't change too much, especially in the Duo security implementation that I've shown. It's, uh, it's very straightforward and easy from a management point of view. But additionally, from the user point of view, I said, let's empower the users and Maybe I want to go manage more devices. That's completely possible uh, as long as the enterprise says it's okay. So, or the, the web service says it's okay. So really, really powerful. And of course, it's an open spec. That's great. Everybody can audit it. You can see what you're getting into. And most importantly, if you have the skills or talent, you can develop against that spec so that uh, rather than paying a, so a software as a service for authentication, you can just do your own authentication in-house and implement the spec. 
but of course there's downsides as well. Uh, first of all, it's bleeding edge, so I wouldn't expect broad vendor adoption anytime soon. It does help that Google's behind it, but in general, uh, I think the spec is emerging and it will take some time. It, the, the use cases also being that only Chrome, only a couple of keys, uh, and really a couple only a couple of services that support it, uh, the, it's a limited use case to begin with. Uh, I think we can adapt to it and grow, especially with uh, uh, services like Duo Security that help abstract it to an extent, but uh, it, it will take some time to broaden the use cases. And then lastly are just the, the fact of a physical key right now. Uh, I like the thought of it. I like putting it on my keychain, but uh, if you lose your key, you're out of luck. So register multiple keys or uh, come up with a backup method uh, in general. So uh, those are the pros and cons. There's probably more, uh, but thank you for listening. And in the next part, I'll talk about the architecture, how I made my demo work and how you can look at it in your infrastructure.